Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian aboard the nuclear-powered aircraft carrier USS George Washington off the Virginia Capes, and we're honored to have with us Rear Admiral Roy Trigger Kelly, who is the Carrier Strike Group 12 commander, but also the Navy's incoming uh, JSF, or F-35, integration boss. Sir, That's correct. thanks for joining us. My pleasure. Happy to be here, Vaga. Um, or I should say thanks very much for having us aboard your ship. Um, I, I, uh, the first question, obviously, is this is a very, very important evolution that we're seeing as reporters, operational Navy pilots that are flying the F-35 for the first time, qualifying on landings, qualifying on, on catapult uh, shots. Um, walk us through what the Navy's timetable is to get this aircraft into service. Obviously, it's in service now with the U.S. Air Force. Uh, it's IOC'd in the Air Force as well as the United States Marine Corps. So we are uh, on similar paths at the, as the Air Force. So Air Force recently did their IOC, so I think the beginning of this month in August, and they stood up their integration office two years prior. We're about to stand up our integration office on 19 September, and that should be within about a two-year window for our IOC. A little noisy there. That should be within a two-year window for our IOC. So we're, we're, we're hoping for late uh, 2018 to uh, do our initial operational capability for the F-35C. And what are some of the gates and milestones you're going to accomplish between now and then? Well, so today is uh, is the final of the the, uh, the developmental test. So developmental test three. This is the last stage that they'll do for carrier environment. And obviously the F-35C. That's what it's all about. It's designed for operating off the aircraft carrier. So DT-3, as they they get out here, they've already done on, on DT-1 was on the Nimitz. And that was uh, day carrier qualification just to get this, the uh, aircraft ship integration going. Uh, DT-2, which, which they did uh, on board the uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower a year ago, and uh, that was uh, for day-night carrier qualifications uh, with the test pilots. Today is uh, now working on uh, asymmetric loads and external stores on the aircraft, uh, max performance for the uh, catapult launches uh, at, at very heavy weights. And uh, on the other side of that, so those are the test pilots, and as you described, this is our first fleet CQ. So VFA 101 is bringing out their instructor pilots and uh, getting their first initial carrier qualifications for those folks. So this is uh, it's a big milestone for us to uh, get through this, uh, this uh, evolution. And then once we've complete, they'll continue on. They'll move into the operational test, and that's really where the focus is going to shift. So operational tests will take us through uh, calendar year or fiscal year 17. And then uh, once we've, we've gotten through all the operational tests, we bring uh, Block 3 Foxtrot, Block 3F will be the uh, version that the Navy wants to IOC with, and that will be in 2018. What are some of the unique challenges of operating this aircraft off of aircraft carriers? Obviously, a lot of, uh, there's been a lot of discussion about the extra noise. Very, very apparent this airplane is a lot noisier than your average uh, Navy fighter. It's certainly louder than the F-18, and that is n no mean feat. It is, it, is not, it is an unquiet jet. Uh, but what are some of the other changes that are required to operate this aircraft off an aircraft carrier? So the Navy has operated our, its jets out here two-engine, and the difference that you're seeing, the F-35 is a single-engine aircraft, single-engine with a lot more thrust. Uh, as a result, the, the temperatures for the exhaust are much higher, so uh, on the flight deck, the, the exhaust temperatures impact not just the personnel but the equipment as well. So the, uh, the JBDs, jet blast door deflectors, They've been augmented or changed, so they have additional cooling flow them flowing through them to make sure that the exhaust coming off the F-35 doesn't literally melt the, the uh, metal back there. Uh, outside of that, there's, uh, there's differences, obviously, in the airplane. It's handling characteristics and what we have in other airplanes. But we're actually taking some of that technology that the F-35 has for its landing characteristics, which are incredibly easy for the pilots to uh, get aboard, and we're bringing that into the, uh, the F-18 uh, fleet so that we can use that. We call it magic carpet. So that technology is now being transferred over to, uh, to use in other airplanes to make it so that the landings on board the ship, which are relatively difficult, are easier for the other platforms. The, um, I remember having this uh, conversation with General uh, Haas Cartwright, who would always make a point that, hey, as one of the early operators of the F-18, he said, you know, there was no shame in using automatic landing, uh, where he did a lot of lot of landings. The Navy went back to that. Do you think the Navy is going to go go to? Because his point is always like the carrier exists to project power at sea, not necessarily prove how um, really cool the pilots are in terms of their ability to land on the boat. How soon do you think before you can get to a future where, um, you know, you are using magic carpet and ALS almost to get back on the boat? I don't know if we'll ever go to a completely automated system, if that's what you're asking. So there's, uh, we, we use those, especially for the night landings when we've got uh, bad weather and challenging environment to get the aircraft back aboard. 
but I think because it's uh, you know, some of the technology is making it easier, it'll probably allow us to reduce some of our training overhead and uh, you know, what we do, not just at the beach to, to prepare for care requir uh, requirements, but also the number of uh, landings required out here to get qualified. So a lot of that will help, I think, to reduce some of that overhead and uh, make it simpler for us to uh, do those evolutions so that we can focus more on the important things, as you described, power projection, what the aircraft carrier and the air wing together can do. How are you guys wrapping your um, minds around stealth, which is a new dimension for naval aviation? Obviously, naval aviation has, uh, you know, after the A-12 debacle, sort of went to, to its comfort zone with the A-18. This is a completely different kind of technology, different kind of sensor future. Fusion, what is some of the intellectual work that you're doing as well as with your Air Force and Marine brothers uh, and sisters to try to get a fully integrated package on a future so carrier? So from a Navy pr perspective, we have uh, the F-35 will be integrated. So by 2025, we should have F-35 completely integrated into the air wings. And the uh, legacy Hornets, the F-18A through D, would be ready to retire by 2026. So that's, that's a long-range timeline, but the idea being that we want to have first day access with our aircraft. And that's what the stealth technology, the fusion integration uh, for all the sensors, and then of course the command and control capability that the F-35 brings. Those are things that we, we think will allow us day one access. So it's important for us as a strike group, especially when you look at uh, aircraft carriers, quite often are the first to respond when something happens around the world. We want to make sure we have aircraft that are capable of responding and being able to give them, give them uh, that access that they need. And one last quick question. Um, what how are you coordinating with the other services to bring um, to bring some of their lessons learned aboard and share some of the lessons that you're learning out here? So the, the, the test, the operational test, is going to be a united front. So it's not just Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps. They're all working together and some of our international partners. So I think as we, we look at development of tactics, there's going to be some differences from one service to the next, but they're also sharing a lot of that just because, you know, it's a new platform and it's an opportunity for us to all learn from each other. Fairwinds following C's on the new assignment, sir. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you.